A man went to the street to buy a newspaper, but he just walked a steps back when he found a groups of people appeared at both ends of the street at the same time. One was a group of very aggressive locals, the other was a group of heavily armed police officers. The two groups of people soon engaged in a fierce battle. Jack was very nervous and scared, waving in and out of their groups to escape quickly. He had a ride in the Southeast Asian city just 17 hours earlier, but he never thought he'd run into a riot. Jack is a water engineer from the United States. He's been sent out to work for his company, so he's bringing his wife and daughter to be based here and involved in the project's development. After the plane landed, the family of Fur soon checked into a fancy hotel for foreign guests. But as soon as they entered the hotel room, Jack was stunned. He watched the TV but saw only snowflakes. There was no signal on the phone. He tried to ask the front desk for a newspaper to read the news, but was told there was none. Jack had no choice but to go out and buy the newspaper himself. Fortunately, he went out to run this trip to find the danger early. Jack looked behind the crowd while running fast. He turned a few corners and finally saw the hotel. Jack originally wanted to enter through the front door, but a crowd of locals had already gathered at the entrance. An American had been shot in public. Jack was so scared that he turned around and ran. He climbed the safety ladder outside the hotel wall and jumped to the second floor. Then he noticed that the locals had rushed into the hotel lobby. They didn't hesitate to smash anything they saw. Jack immediately took the elevator back to his room. At that moment, his wife Annie was preparing to go swimming in the pool on the fourth floor with their little daughteries. Jack interrupted her and pulled Annie to stand by the window to look out. He tried to explain to Annie that there was a riot outside and it was very dangerous. Then Jack was shocked to find his eldest daughter Lucy had already gone to the pool to swim alone. Jack was so worried that he could only tell Annie to lock the doors and windows and wait for him in his room. Annie didn't believe Jack's story at first, but soon she heard a scream from the other door. She looked through the peephole and saw the locals strutting out of the opposite room. Then they knocked on the door of her room. Annie was so scared that she pushed against the door and didn't dare to make a sound. Then she heard the screams coming from the next room. Annie shivered and pushed down the couch and put it behind the door. She waited anxiously for her husband to come back. On the other hand, Jack finally found Lucy in the pool after dodging the locals several times. But then the locals in the restaurant also found Jack. Jack used the swimming ring to hold the door and carried his daughter all the way up the stairs. The locals couldn't push the door. So they broke the glass and continued to chase them. Just when Jack was about to be attacked by the enemy, Hammond suddenly appeared. He and Jack's family met at the airport. Because they were staying in the same hotel, Hammond asked his friend to drive them to the hotel together. Hammond was fighting with the locals. Hammond told Jack to take shelter on the rooftop. With Hammond's help, Jack finally managed to reunite with Annie. Jack then persuaded Annie to venture to the rooftop. At this time, Many foreign refugees had gathered on the rooftop. One of them heard the slogans of the locals downstairs. The front desk of the hotel explained to the crowd. The locals were only riding because they didn't accept the American takeover of their water resources. Jack's head dropped as soon as he heard this. It was the company he was employed by that caused the trouble. But he never knew that he thought he was here to support the project. Soon Jack and the others heard the sound of a helicopter. They happily walked forward thinking they could leave in a helicopter. But the helicopter was also filled with locals. When they saw the people on the rooftop, they shot them. The helicopter even crashed on the rooftop. Luckily, Jack dodged just in time. He and his wife and daughters hid behind a pillar to avoid the shooting. Jack ran to the side of the building. He saw a building across the street where they could get out. He just needed to encourage Annie to jump over first. Then he throws his two daughters on top of the building, across the street. This way the family of Fur had a chance to survive. Annie looks at the distance between the two buildings and is instinctively scared. But she was encouraged by Jack to leap to the opposite side. Finally Annie landed on her knees and elbows after scraping them. Then Jack started throwing his two daughters. Is was thrown before she knew what was happening. Lucy was scared to see all this. Just as she was about to leave Jack. She held on to her father's arm. Father and daughter were hanging from the side of the building. The situation was critical. Luckily, a passerby reached out in time to pull them up. The father and daughter were safe from danger. Jack was worried about further accidents. He had to use the belt to fix Lucy's arms. This successfully threw Lucy to the roof of the opposite building. At the same time, the locals also noticed Jack. Jack as the management is also one of the targets in their eyes. But Jack saw his daughter landed safely and quickly jumped to the opposite side. The passerby who helped them was shot dead by the locals. After a brief respite on the balcony, the family of four, Jack and Annie worked together again to pass their daughters down the rooftop through the window they saw people in an office rushing to evacuate they hid in the hallway in silence 
They wanted to wait until the people were gone before moving on, but the locals had already fired their tanks and were ready to shell the building. Jack had to break a window to get into the office in a hurry. The people in the office saw the family of four and rushed forward. Suddenly, the tank fired with precision into the room. The office was suddenly filled with smoke. The people who could not evacuate died instantly. Then a few locals came up to check it out. Jack and his wife and daughter were hiding under a ruin. They were too scared to breathe. Ease was so desperate to go to the bathroom that latter just shit her pants. They waited for a long time. The locals finally left. Jack looked out the window and found four Americans lined up on the road. They were instantly run over by a large car. He didn't dare stay longer and let his wife and daughter quickly change into the locals' clothes. At that moment, a young local spotted Jack and the others. He shouted and tried to call his companions. Jack tried to stop him. Jack tried to communicate with him and hoped that he would let them go for the sake of the children. But as soon as he let go, the local man immediately shouted again. Jack had to shoot him in his desperation. It was the first time he killed someone. Jack and Annie both had some heart palpitations. But in this situation, the couple had to encourage each other. The four of them changed their clothes and went downstairs carefully. Jack found a set of keys from a corpse before. He tried several times. He got a small electric motorcycle that matched the keys. He was even approached by a local. Luckily, he was dressed as a local and escaped death. Soon the family of her was on the run on their little motorcycle. The place they were going to was the American Embassy. On their way out, they encountered a group of locals protesting in the streets. Annie was so scared that she told Jack to turn around and run. Jack slowed down the motorcycle and rode through the crowd. Annie was almost recognized as a foreigner by others. Luckily, she was able to handle the situation calmly and they managed to escape. After a few turns on their motorcycle, Jack and his family finally arrived at the embassy. But then the embassy was overrun by locals. A group of locals found Jack and his family just after bombing the embassy. They came after them. Jack and Annie escorted their two daughters to the road and fled. Finally, they accidentally broke into a house. The old man saw Jack's two daughters were still young and decided to help them. He told Jack and the others to hide behind a greenery. Then he himself went to deal with the other locals. The leader of the locals pushes the old man down as soon as he enters. The others quickly search the area. Jack is worried about getting caught and moves across the street. He was ready to grab a gun in case of an accident. But Jack's actions attracted the attention of the locals. Just as his hiding place was about to be discovered by them, Annie suddenly stood still and raised her hand to signal her surrender. Jack saw a group of locals were surrounding Annie. Jack suddenly jumped out and knocked down one of the locals. He succeeded in grabbing a gun, but after Jack got the gun, he realized he didn't know how to use it. He did not resist twice and was controlled by the others on the spot. Then the leader of the locals ripped off Annie's clothes. He tried to humiliate his wife in front of Jack. Just when the two are in danger and can't save themselves, Hammond arrives with his friends. He initially tried to convince them to stay calm. But after no success, they opened fire. The two men were accurate shots, except for the leader of the locals who escaped. The others were all killed. Once again, the Jacks survived the danger. Then they followed Hammond to a rooftop. After a long day on the run, the four of them finally got some rest. Here Hammond pointed to a river and told Jack and Annie, the borderline is just a few meters downstream. As long as they successfully crossed the borderline, they could get shelter and escape completely. Then Jack also learned from Hammond the reason for the riot. Hammond had a lot to do with it. He was ordered by the government to provide loans to the locals here, especially for large public works projects. When they can pay back the loans, they can take the results of their work for themselves. The reason these locals are rioting, they were actually protecting their families and children. That night Jack and the others were attacked by the locals again. Hammond was shot during the escape and lost his strength. He saw Jack return and had to drag him before leaving. Hammond had to pretend to have died. After Jack left, Hammond struggles to get up. He shot the local driver at close range. The driver dies. The truck rolls to the side of the road. Hammond stops the other locals from going after Jack and the others, but he himself was killed. On the other hand, Jack's family of four finally made it to the shore along the path. Jack hit his wife and daughter first. He sneaked down to the shore to look for the boat. Soon Jack found a small boat on the shore. Just as he was turning back to get his wife and daughter into the boat, a fisherman suddenly ran up to him. Jack gave the fisherman a wristwatch and indicated that he wanted to buy the boat. But the fisherman pointed to Jack's feet. He only wanted Jack's shoes. Jack immediately took off his shoes and gave them to him without hesitation. But they delayed the best time to escape because of this. The locals came after them again. The fisherman hit Jack under a boat. 
but he was still found. This time Jack was controlled by the local people again. Lucy saw that her father was in danger and ran out in desperation. The leader of the locals suddenly got excited. He told Lucy to point the gun at Jack, then he pointed the gun at Lucy's head. His meaning was clear, Lucy must kill her father, or he would kill Lucy. Jack was worried about Lucy's safety. So he urged Lucy to shoot him, but Lucy was still crying and shaking her head when both sides were at a standstill and no one was taking action. And he suddenly hit the local leader with a shovel from behind them. Jack instantly jumped on them and grabbed the leader's pistol. He killed the other two locals who were holding him down. The family of for escape from death again. Soon they get into a boat and row towards the borderline. Jack's shoulder injury from the previous fight makes him weak when rowing. And a Saturday on the bow of the boat and paddled hard. But soon the locals are still following them. The family of for now had no weapons and nowhere to hide. And he rushed to protect her daughters. Jack raises his hands in surrender. But by this time, their boat had crossed the border into a neighboring country. The soldiers in the neighboring country's port immediately turned their guns on the other locals. Jack's family was supposed to be sheltered once they entered their country. The locals gave up the trail and left at the point of many guns. Jack and his family were able to escape unharmed. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.